All right, um, I'm going to tackle uh, a problem here with uh, with the socks. So you would have read at the beginning of the video. It's uh, uh, Parker has eight identical black socks, uh, ten identical white socks, and he's pulling two socks at random out of the drawer. We need to figure out the probability that he pulls out a pair of mismatched socks. So one black and the other white. Now the thing here is, it can be white black or black white. It doesn't matter. Um, Either one gives us a, a black and white sock. So what you want to ask yourself first is does order matter? In this case, the order does not matter. It's black, white, or white, black, we don't care. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to use uh, counting principles here. I'm going to use uh, combinations. So of the 10 available White socks, selecting one. Of the eight available black socks, selecting one. And then this, remember, on the top of a, uh, of a fraction for probability is our favorable outcomes. In this case, favorable is a black and white. And then the bottom is total outcomes. So what are the total number of ways you can select two, car, um, two socks from a drawer? Well, if there's 18 socks in the drawer, it's 18, uh, 18 C2 is the total number of ways that you can select two uh, socks from the drawer, considering that order doesn't matter at all. Okay? So this will give us the correct answer here. Um, 10 C1 is just 10, and 8 C1 is just 8. And then the denominator, 18C2, uh, comes up to 153. Uh, so in lowest terms here, our answer is going to be 80 over 153 is the probability of getting a white or a black in either order. Okay? This um, need to have particular DVDs in them. So yes, the order matters because um, it, it matters where you place the DVD in these five cases. One, two, three, four, five. So the correct DVD needs to go in each spot. So yes, the order matters. It's, there's a difference between a DVD going here or here. So if you've got five DVD cases, and you're going to put um, five DVDs into five cases, that's going to be uh, five factorial. Okay, So you have five, five uh, possibilities for the first case, four for the second case, three, two, one. So. It actually comes out to five factorial for the number of ways you can arrange that. But the question's asking for a probability. And remember, probability is the, um, the uh, favorable outcome. Over the total outcomes. Now the total outcomes here, the total number of ways you can arrange these DVDs is five times four times three times two times one. So in this fraction, the denominator is 5 factorial because if you have 5 DVDs arranged in 5 different uh, spots, you can do that in 5 factorial ways. This is your total. Now of all of those arrangements, the guy is looking for one particular arrangement. And that one arrangement is where the right, the right DVD is in the right case. So that's only one possibility. They're all perfectly placed in their cases. So the answer to this question is 1 over 5 factorial which comes out to 1 over 120. So the answer is C for that one. Line one, please, Mr. Rossus, line one. So for the last one, going back to arranging words. So you're given the word Okotoks. Uh, Okotoks has three, six, seven letters. And it's asking us, if you make arrangements of those letters, what is the chance or the probability of the nearest hundredth 
that the arrangement, if you randomly pick it, has a vowel at the beginning and the end. So again, when we set up a probability for this, it needs to be the favorable outcomes over the total outcomes. So I'm going to have a fraction here. This is quite a difficult problem because I actually have to do it twice. Um, now first, if we do the total arrangements, what's the total number of ways you can arrange the letters of this word? Well, that's going back to the combinations unit. Um, so the total at the bottom. And the total number of arrangements is actually going to be 7 factorial for 7 letters. 7 letters in 7 different ways. Unfortunately, people are going to miss the fact that it's 7 factorial divided by 3 factorial, 2 factorial. Why? Because you've got 2 Ks and 3 Os. Those uh, elements are repeated. So if you remember, they're indistinguishable. If you flip your Os around, you get the same arrangement. So we have to divide by 3 factorial because that element is copied 3 times. We need to divide by 2 factorial because the K is copied twice. Um, this will give you the total number of possibilities for arranging the word. That's the bottom. That's our total. Now the favorable for a probability has to go up top. Which of those possible arrangements are actually favorable? Well, the favorable ones are the ones that begin and end with vowel. So I'm going to do that here. Now if it begins with a vowel, how many options do you have? Three. Any of the O's can go here. So it has to be a vowel here. And a vowel here. We just said that's three at the beginning, which would leave two choices at the end. The only thing is, what makes this question even harder is all the vowels are actually the same. So you actually, you can look at this in two ways. You could actually write three factorial, or just three, divided by three factorial because there's three of the same element. Um, the easier way to look at it is, you actually have no choice here, it has to be an O. I know there's three O's, but they're indistinguishable. You wouldn't know which O goes where, because they're all the same element. So you actually only have one option here, it has to be an O. And you only have one option at the end, it has to be an O. Which leaves you another O to go somewhere in the middle, but we've already taken care of the fact that there is an O in the beginning and the end. That is tricky. A lot of people wouldn't really notice that. Um, but I think that's the easiest way for me to explain that. There is a more complicated way of justifying why that is. Now that we've eliminated two of the letters, so two of the O's are gone, we're down to five letters in the middle. So you have five, four, three, two, one in the middle, which basically leaves you with uh, five factorial. Okay? So you've got five factorial for the, the middle letters. Um, the, the only thing then that you need to be careful with if you look at this, for how we put it in, of those five remaining letters, there's two Ks. So again, we actually, when we do the favorable, it's five factorial, five, four, three, two, one, but we actually have to divide by two factorial because of these five elements, the K appears twice. We've only got one O because we've eliminated two of the O's. We've used one of the O's at the beginning and the end. So we've got K O T uh, K S. There's two K's, so you've got to divide by two factorial again. So um, your top part of the uh, probability is five factorial over two factorial, and then the total is seven factorial over three factorial, two factorial. If you actually divide that out, you end up getting a probability of 14%. Um, this bottom part comes out to 420 if you evaluate this. And then if you evaluate the top, you get 60. So 60 over 420 comes out to 0.14 or 14%. So I said this in class. Um, I find, I think these are very difficult and most people would agree with me. Why is this very difficult? None of these particular ideas are uh, terribly hard. The only thing is they're all subtle. Like if you missed any one of these little things, your whole question's wrong. So the only way, the only remedy for that is a lot of practice uh, to recognize when you're dealing with a situation where you've got one of these exceptions where um, you have to make an adjustment. Uh, I hope that helps. Again, the only way to get better at this is practice a lot of it. And um, come see me if you'd like uh, if you'd like more help on this subject. Thanks for watching.